Okay, in this problem, what we're dealing with is um, there were 16 different athletes who were each randomly assigned to one of these four treatments, right? So basically with that, what we have is a completely randomized design and we're testing to see how much pounds or how many pounds each athlete lost under the treatments, right? So of course you have the placebo, which means they took a sugar pill, something that was fake, and then you have three kinds of supplements and we're going to see essentially which supplement produces the biggest weight loss, right? Now, we want to use this data and a 2.5% significance level to test for differences between the four treatments. So remember that the null hypothesis says that all of them are the same, that the treatment means are all the same. Well, based on this ANOVA table, which I've formed with this data, you can see the p-value is very small, right? The p-value is way less than 1%. Now, what happens if we compare a p-value like that to an alpha of 25 Well, whenever the p-value is less than alpha, we decide to reject HO. So we're going to say this, we're going to say since the p-value is less than alpha, reject HO. Now if we're rejecting HO, we're supporting the idea that at least one of these treatments is different from the others, right? At least one of them is significantly different from the others. Now what can we conclude from that? Well, the fact that they included the placebo in the, um, in the trial, and we can tell that the placebo has the absolute lowest mean, right? This is the total. If you divide it by four, you get the mean, but it has the absolute lowest treatment total. And then the highest treatment total is supplement B. If we're saying that at least one pair of these supplements is significantly different from one another, we have to at least conclude that the worst case scenario, it's got to be the placebo and the highest. In this case, I say the placebo and supplement B because this is the smallest treatment value and this is the largest treatment value. So if there's going to be a difference between one pair of these, you know, then it would have to be true that this and this are significantly different, right? And we may, we may find out that supplement B and supplement C are also significantly different from one another. We may find that supplement B is significantly different from supplement A, meaning it's significantly higher than supplement A. But I don't know that for certain. All I know is that I can find, because of this conclusion that we rejected HO, all I know is that we can find at least two of these supplements where when we pair them together, we can say there's a significant difference between them. And so if that's the case, you know, the highest and the lowest paired together must be significantly different from one another. At least we know that, right? So I can certainly say that supplement B outperforms the sugar pill, the placebo. And so that goes to this question, do these supplements seem to work? Well, we can say what? At least one of them seems to work better than a sugar pill. So that must mean that at least one of them is effective at helping you lose weight. All right, now, the other thing I want to talk about is the fact that while we know that supplement B is much better than placebo, we don't really know that supplement B is significantly better than supplement A because we were able to show only that we could reject the null hypothesis that all of them were equal to one another. But that doesn't mean we know, for example, that B and A are significantly different. We don't even know if B and C are significantly different, right? Logically, like I said before, the only thing we can determine is that the biggest is significantly different from the smallest. But we don't know, for example, if B and A are significantly different. We don't even know if A and C are different, or C and uh, the placebo are different, or even A and the placebo, right? We don't, we can't say any of those things for sure. The only one logically we can say for sure is that the largest is significantly different from the smallest. Because if you couldn't say that, then you wouldn't be able to say any of these are significantly different from one another. Because certainly the difference between these other values and the largest is smaller than the difference between B and placebo, right? The greatest difference seems to exist here. So if there is going to be a significant difference between these means, certainly uh, those two would have to be significantly different from one another. All right, so what this leads us to is this idea that we're eventually going to need to form what's called a multiple comparison procedure, which will allow us to compare, for example, supplement A against B, supplement A against C, supplement A against placebo, right? B against all the others, C against all the others, you know, so on and so forth. The reason why we want to be able to do that is because then we'll be able to say, well, which ones really differ from one another? If this test, of course, had failed to reject the null hypothesis, that would mean that essentially we're supporting, or not supporting, but maintaining the null hypothesis. We're allowing it to stay put and, and seeing it as being true. And if that were the case, the null hypothesis says they're all the same. At that point, there's no need to do a multiple comparison procedure. But if we reject the null hypothesis, then we want to know, well, okay, we're rejecting the idea they're all the same, so let's try to figure out which ones are really different from one another. At that point, we need a multiple comparison procedure. 
because just by rejecting HO, the only thing we could say is that the pair that has the biggest difference from one another, they must be significantly different. But we don't know about all the others. That's the problem. 